We humans are just one of the 50 billion species that have developed on a small planet called Earth, which is the third planet from the Sun. We've sent machines called spacecraft to explore some of the other worlds in our solar system, and even landed on a few of them. This is like a great adventure, a mythic journey. But what about the future? What will we discover next? It's hard to predict, but there are some exciting mysteries that scientists are working on. For example, we still don't know what most of the universe is made of. There are also strange ideas about the distances between galaxies and the explosive events called gamma ray bursters. There are many other questions too, like the age of the universe and the search for building blocks of life in space. As long as people keep exploring and asking questions, there will always be new discoveries and stories to tell. There is a planet called Mars. A long, long time ago, around 4 billion years ago, Mars was a warm and wet place, much like Earth. There were rivers, lakes, and maybe even oceans on Mars. But then something changed, and Mars turned into the cold and dry desert we see today. People have been wondering if there was ever life on Mars. Maybe life started there, and then disappeared, or maybe it still exists in hidden places. To find out, scientists have been studying Mars from afar and even sending spacecraft to land on its surface. In 1976, a spacecraft called Viking landed on Mars and took a sniff of the air. It found some of the same gases as on Earth, like carbon dioxide, but not others like ozone. The gases on Mars were different from the ones on Earth in some ways. Meanwhile, on Earth, scientists found rocks that had fallen from space and landed on the Antarctic ice. Some of these rocks came from the Moon and Venus, but a few came from Mars. In 1995, scientists studied one of these Mars rocks closely and found something interesting. Inside the rock, they discovered tiny bits of organic molecules, which are the building blocks of life. These molecules were more concentrated deeper inside the rock which suggested they were part of the rock and not just something that got there from Earth. The scientists also found what some people call nanofossils tiny spheres that looked a bit like small colonies of bacteria. But it's not certain if these nanofossils are really signs of life or if there are other minerals on Mars that look the same. So, while the discovery of these organic molecules and nanofossils is exciting, it's not enough to prove that there was or is life on Mars but it does give scientists more reasons to keep looking. They want to study other Mars rocks, both deep inside the planet and closer to the surface. They also want to take another look at the results from the Viking spacecraft's biology experiments, which some scientists think might have hinted at the presence of life. In the future, scientists might send more spacecraft to Mars to explore places that might have been the last to lose their warmth and wetness. This whole field of studying life on Mars or Martian exobiology, is just beginning, and there's still so much to learn. The story of Mars is a mystery that scientists are trying to solve. They want to know if there was ever life on this once warm and wet planet, and if there might still be life hiding somewhere today. By studying Mars rocks and sending spacecraft to explore the planet, they hope to uncover the secrets of this fascinating world. Scientists dreamed of discovering life beyond our own planet Earth. They imagine finding simple microbes on Mars, which would be a huge surprise and a wonderful discovery. If this happened, they would try to figure out if the life on Mars and Earth started independently or if it was somehow transported between the two planets. Furthermore, they hope to find out if the life forms on Mars use the same building blocks as life on Earth, like nucleic acids and proteins. No matter what they found, it would be a big step forward in our understanding of life and how it might exist elsewhere in the universe. To make these discoveries, many countries plan to send robots and spacecraft to Mars in the next decade. They even dreamed of a mission in 2005 that would bring samples from Mars back to Earth. Another exciting possibility was the moon Titan, which orbits Saturn. It has a thick atmosphere filled with nitrogen and methane, and scientists found simple organic molecules there, similar to those believed to be involved in the origin of life on Earth. Although Titan is very far from the Sun and most of its water is frozen, it's thought that occasional comet impacts could melt its surface, creating conditions similar to early Earth. 
In 2004, a spacecraft named Cassini, along with a smaller probe called Huygens built by the European Space Agency, would visit Titan. They hoped to learn more about whether Titan was on the path to developing life. Finally, scientists also wondered if there was intelligent life elsewhere in the universe. They used the largest radio telescopes on Earth to listen for signals from other planets. Although they hadn't found any clear signs yet, they continued to search, knowing that it was a long and important process. If they found intelligent life, it would change everything we know about the universe and our place in it. And even if they didn't find any after a thorough search, it would help us understand how rare and special life on Earth truly is. This search, no matter the outcome, was something they believed was very important to do. Scientists started to wonder about the beginning and the end of the whole universe. They found out that the universe is getting bigger, and all the stars and galaxies are moving away from each other. This happened because of a big explosion that took place when the universe was born, or at least its current form. Now, the universe's expansion is like when you throw a rocket into the sky. The Earth's gravity pulls the rocket back but not hard enough to stop it from going far away. The universe is the same way. If there's a lot of matter in it, its gravity will eventually slow down and stop the expansion. But if there isn't enough matter, the universe will keep expanding forever. Right now, there isn't enough matter to slow down the expansion, but there might be something called dark matter that we can't see. If dark matter exists, it could help to slow down the expansion. If the universe expands and then starts to shrink, it might go through an endless cycle of expanding and contracting, making the universe infinite and not needing to be created. On the other hand, if the universe keeps expanding, it could mean that it was created from nothing. Scientists are still trying to figure out the answers to these big questions. They use special tools and equipment to observe and study the universe, instead of just guessing or telling stories. They believe that the most exciting discoveries will be the ones they haven't even thought of yet. In the meantime, they continue to learn more about planets like Jupiter. Jupiter is a giant planet made mostly of hydrogen and helium, and it's so big that it could fit a thousand Earths inside it. The pressure and heat inside Jupiter are so intense that electrons are separated from atoms, and hydrogen becomes a hot metal. This is why Jupiter gives off more energy than it receives from the Sun. At the center of Jupiter, there's a rocky and iron world that's much bigger than Earth. The conditions inside Jupiter are so extreme that it's hard to imagine any kind of life there. However, some scientists like to think about what kind of life might exist in the atmosphere of a planet similar to Jupiter. Scientists also know that asteroids and comets can transfer material between planets, so it's possible that life could have been transferred from Earth to Jupiter a long time ago. But this is just a very wild guess. The universe is a big and mysterious place, and scientists are working hard to learn more about it every day. They're trying to figure out where it came from, where it's going, and if there's life beyond our own planet. In the universe, there was a big ball of fire called the sun. The sun had many friends, called planets, who orbited around it. One of these planets was named Jupiter. Jupiter was very far from the sun, about five times as far as Earth is. If it weren't for some special things happening in Jupiter's atmosphere, it would be really, really cold there, like the temperature on some of Jupiter's moons. All the planets in our solar system, including Jupiter, go around the Sun in a way that's like they're on the same path or groove. This was a mystery to a smart man named Isaac Newton. He thought that maybe God started everything this way. But two other smart people, Pierre Simon, the Marquis de Laplace, and Immanuel Kant had a different idea. They believed that it happened because of the laws of physics that Newton discovered. Imagine a big cloud of gas and dust floating in space. If this cloud is dense enough, it will start to pull itself together because of gravity. As it gets smaller, it will spin faster, like a skater spinning with her arms in. This spinning won't stop the cloud from getting smaller in one direction, but it will slow it down in the direction it's spinning. So, the cloud turns into a flat disk. When planets form from this disk, they will all be going around the sun in the same flat path. 
but it was hard to find proof of this idea. It wasn't until many years later, with better technology and tools like orbiting observatories, that scientists found evidence of these flat disks around young stars. These disks are made of dust and gas, just like the cloud in the story. When they looked at these young stars, they saw that many of them had these disks, and some even seemed to be missing dust and gas close to the star, as if planets had already formed there. Even though this is strong evidence, it's not 100% proof. But it does show that stars like our sun probably have planets around them a lot of the time. This means that there could be billions of planets in our galaxy alone. Now, the question is, can we see these planets? They're very far away, and the stars shine only because of the light they reflect. But with our improving technology, we should be able to see big planets like Jupiter around nearby stars, maybe even in infrared light. People found out that there are planets around stars other than our sun. This was a big surprise because they found these planets around a special kind of star called a pulsar. A pulsar is a tiny, super-fast spinning star that was once much bigger, like our sun. It's left over from a huge explosion called a supernova. The pulsar sends out a beam of light that reaches Earth every 0.006 seconds. Scientists like Alex Wolzen noticed that this beam had tiny, unexpected changes. These changes were like little wobbles, and they happened at the exact times you'd expect if there were planets orbiting the pulsar. These planets are not like Jupiter, which is much bigger than Earth. Two of them are probably about the same size as Earth, and they orbit their star at a distance similar to Earth's distance from the Sun. But there's a problem. The pulsar sends out a lot of charged particles that make the planets very hot, hotter than boiling water. So, it's unlikely that there's life on these planets. After this discovery, more planets were found around ordinary stars like our Sun. Scientists used big telescopes to watch these stars and noticed that they moved a little bit. They realized that an invisible planet was pulling on the star, causing it to move closer and then farther away. This is called the Doppler effect, like how a car's horn sounds different when it's coming towards you or going away. These new planets were found around stars in different parts of the sky, like Pegasus, Virgo, Ursa Major, Cancer, Taurus, and Andromeda. Some of these stars are close enough that we can see them with our eyes. The planets around these stars are different sizes, from a little smaller than Jupiter to much bigger. They are also very close to their stars, much closer than Earth is to the Sun. One strange thing about these planets is that the big ones, like Jupiter, are closer to their stars than the smaller ones. We don't know how this happened. It's possible that these planets formed far away from their stars and moved closer, but no one is sure. Some experts think that a big planet like Jupiter couldn't form so close to a star. In our solar system, the small planets are near the sun and the big planets are far away. But in these new systems, it's the opposite. Scientists are still trying to figure out why this is. They also don't know if these planets are like Jupiter, with lots of hydrogen and helium, or if they're more like Earth. But one thing is certain, the discovery of these planets has opened up a whole new world for us to learn about and explore. Scientists were trying to understand how planets, like Jupiter, were formed in the universe. They believed that in cold, outer parts of the nebula, where temperatures were very low, small ice and rock worldlets came together. These worldlets collided gently and stuck to each other, growing larger and larger. As they got bigger, they attracted hydrogen and helium gases from the nebula, forming a planet like Jupiter. But what if some nebula disks were colder than expected, even close to the star? This could mean that our solar system might not be very typical. Scientists have found Earth-mass planets around a pulsar and Jupiter-mass planets around sun-like stars which shows that there are many different types of planetary systems out there. A technique called astrometry has helped scientists find Earth-like planets around a star close to our Sun, called Lalandi 21185. They watch the star's motion and look for any signs of planets affecting its path. They found at least two Earth-like planets around this star, and maybe more. Jupiter-like planets might have moons, and if these moons are close to their stars, they could have temperatures suitable for life. 
one day, we might even be able to send fast spacecraft to visit these worlds. Scientists are using many different methods to find more planets around nearby stars. Some of these methods include using interferometers, ground-based telescopes that cancel out Earth's atmosphere disturbances, and space-borne measurements of star dimming when a planet passes in front of it. They hope to find hundreds of other planetary systems in the Milky Way galaxy in the coming decades, and maybe even some with water oceans, oxygen atmospheres, and signs of life. In the meantime, let's imagine a story. One day, a person received a package in the mail. It was marked fragile and had a cracked goblet sticker on it. They opened it carefully and found a clear, half-filled sphere of water inside, labeled as world number 4210. They placed it on a lucite stand and looked inside, wondering about the many other worlds like this one. So, the world of planets and their formation is a fascinating and ever-evolving mystery. Scientists continue to explore and discover new information about our universe, and we can only imagine what exciting discoveries are yet to come.